Hey guys, this is Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software and features video for the Eaton Glowfish V900. Most of Windows mobile devices that are coming out have some kind of interface replacement that covers up the boring, plain, ordinary, difficult to use Windows mobile interface. Uh, so you have TouchFlow and TouchFlow 3D, and the Sony Ericsson Xperia X1 will have its own kind of interface replacement. And on the Glowfish V900, we have SPB Mobile Shell, which is a little bit cheating because you can get SPB Mobile Shell for any Windows mobile device, but we like Mobile Shell because of what it does to your to, to the interface here. So we can go from screen to screen by swiping our finger. We can see our favorite people here. The next pane is programs, and we get really neat animations in SPB Mobile Shell. This isn't really E10's doing. This is just a piece of software that's been out there for a long time. But it's a really nice addition. Out of the box, this is what the Today screen looks like. It's a little bit cluttered for my taste. It puts some programs here that you can launch and that sort of thing. There's a soft button down here for SPB Mobile Shell, which will take you into the screen that I just showed you. I'm going to exit there. There's a speed dial button, which will bring up uh, little blue squares that you can assign to people that you call quite often, so that's good. Okay, now I'm going to go into the Start menu and show you some things. The Start menu is not touch-friendly, unfortunately. All the entries are kind of small, requiring you to use your stylus to kind of select an item because it's more precise. I'm going to go into Office Mobile to show you the on-screen keyboard options that come on the V900. And obviously this is the standard Windows Mobile on-screen keyboard, but E10 includes one keyboard called Easy Keyboard, and it's really a bad name for it because this is not an easy keyboard. It's not even a standard QWERTY keyboard layout. And it's very difficult to use, so I'm probably going to stick with the standard um, regular keyboard. It's unfortunate that there's no good on-screen keyboard because obviously this device doesn't have a standard hardware keyboard that you can use to type. Looks like we're going to have to use something like TouchPal to fill that void. Okay, so let's go into the Programs menu. All the icons look very sharp. It's a VGA screen. The white is very white. There's a lot of contrast. It looks good. This device, like the Samsung Omnia, has an accelerometer that works in any program. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and pan, and then I'm going to tilt the device. And it's a very fast screen rotation. It's actually probably faster than the HTC Touch Pro. But how fast is it? Well, let's compare it to the Samsung Omnia. I think that would be a really good comparison. So I'm going to turn on the Omnia, and I'm going to make sure we're in the same screen. I'm going to get to the program screen. All right, let's see which one's faster. One, two, three. I'm going to need a little bit of help there. Let's try it again. Let's go the other way. Looks like the V900 is faster. It doesn't have that fancy screen rotation, so it doesn't look as cool, but it, it snaps into place very fast. Very fast screen rotation speed on the V900. And there are a few settings that will allow you to change the sensitivity of this and so on. I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, now on the programs list, let's go through some of these programs. Games, GPS, it's all standard stuff, but in multimedia, we have some interesting things. This device can actually act as an FM transmitter so that if you are in your car and you have music on your storage card, you can switch to a certain band that you see on the screen and you can tune into that and hear the music from your device. Pretty nice, so you don't have to buy a standalone FM transmitter. It's a pretty unique feature. And then we have FM Tuner, which makes use of the antenna. You probably hear static right now because we're on the Euro band. I've got to change that back to US. It doesn't stay on the right one for some reason. And I'm going to open up the antenna, and you'll hear it get pretty clear. And what's great is that it's got a feature called Auto Scan. So if I go to My Favorites, and I go down here to Auto Scan, what it'll do is it'll scan for the most clear stations in the area. And the result is that you get a list of all these stations that come in pretty clear. And we're indoors right now, so this is pretty good for being indoors listening to radio on a Windows mobile device. To the right of that is Mobile TV Player, which allows you to get DV, DVBT, it's a hard, hard thing to say, uh, TV broadcast if you live in Europe or Asia or other parts of the world, pretty much anywhere but um, the United States, and I'll show you that in a second. So here we set, we have a, a drop down that says select the region, and if we select try to select the region, United States isn't anywhere to be seen on this list, of course. So unfortunately, we're not able to test that feature. Okay, moving on to the right, we have Name Card Manager, which is that program that will allow you to take a picture of a business card, have the text converted 
and saved as a contact. I haven't tested that yet, but I will for the full review coming up soon. Let's go down the list. Phone, we have nothing terribly interesting. A link to SMS, uh, speed dial, and that sort of thing. Going over to utilities, we have a button that will allow us to hard reset the device. We have a backup utility. Very simple backup utility. Doesn't do that much. It's not like Sprite Backup or SPB Backup or anything like that. Down here, we have an interesting program called Memory Optimization. What you can set it to do is automatically reset your device at a certain time every day. The reason being because you get programs in, uh, in system memory and you may want to reboot, just like you would want to reboot your computer after a few days. I really don't see the need for this. Hopefully the V900 won't need to be reset every few days. I mean, this is a very high-end device. And also you can set it to restart after a certain amount of memory is reached or gets to a certain point. All right, let's move down the list. We have Voice Commander instead of Microsoft Voice Command, so you have to train this one, unfortunately. Let's go on the Communications Manager. Communications Manager is well done. It's, it's skinned with this kind of blackish color scheme. Very finger-friendly. Going down the list further, we have uh, an SPB, SPB menu over here, settings for the SPB mobile shell. And then we have Streaming Player, which allows you to look at videos from m.youtube.com. Out of the box, Windows Mobile doesn't let you stream videos. And that's pretty much it. Let me take you into the settings menu where are, there are some interesting entries. Okay, there's nothing in the first tab, but in the second tab, we have some settings for the accelerometer. So we can change the sensitivity of it, but we can also set exceptions, which is really neat. So if you're in a certain program and you don't want the accelerometer to work, you can turn it on here. This is something that the, S that the Samsung Omnia should have because there are some applications like the phone or perhaps you're in Word Mobile, you don't want it to go into landscape, you always want it to be in portrait. This is a great way to do that. Going down the list further, we have other standard things, and then we have TV out settings. Fortunately, this device has come with the cables needed to do TV out. So we have standard, you know, red, yellow, and white. And then on the other end is just standard mini USB, like so. And then there is a pass-through mini USB port. So you're not blocking your mini USB port. You can use it still to charge or sync or anything like that, even if it's connected to a projector or a monitor and you're using out, you're using the TV out functionality. The interface is pretty simple. You can turn on the TV out. You can change the TV format. The resolution comes out as VGA. You can't change that. It, you can't scale above VGA. And that's unfortunate because on a, you know, a flat panel TV, it doesn't look that clear. And finally, on connections, we have nothing really usual here. Again, we have the connection manager and that sort of thing. I got the de this device to work on HSDPA here in the United States, working on AT&T, because it has the UMTS 850 band. So that's, that's good news. And finally, a note on performance. You probably have seen by now that the performance of this device is very good. It's got a 533 megahertz Samsung processor. The screens come up quickly. The screen rotation is quite fast. It's almost instant. I don't want to use that word because instant is instant. This is not instant, but it's, it's very fast. All in all, I'd say the software on this device is solid, though it's buggy at times. There are times when it doesn't come out of standby or it becomes unresponsive, which it really shouldn't. I think it's just a matter of getting the ROM right, and I think E10 will issue a new ROM sometime soon. We've got a lot more to cover on the E10 V900. It'll be covered in full on the review at pocketnow.com coming up in a few days. But that's it for now.